Last year, you may remember that myself, Miss Vicky B and Kerry Harling did a series of collaborative videos where we each took uh, a subject and gave our own take on it, sort of without club, a collaboration without collaborating kind of thing, where we just gave our own take on a specific subject and how we dealt with that subject or used it. Now, if you already follow them, you will have seen their videos probably on Evernote that they did uh, I think uh, two weeks ago. I'm a little behind. Mine should have gone up last week, but I had a terrible migraine for most of last week and it was just a non-week, basically. Uh, but I'm back <laughs> and I've been racking my brains how to try and um, explain to you how I use Evernote without actually showing you how I use Evernote. And the reason for that is that I use Evernote for personal things that I don't want to be all over YouTube. So uh, yeah, it's quite difficult. So my advice would be uh, go and watch Carrie and Vicky's videos first because I know that they've done kind of a run through. Vicky has been using basic Evernote for quite a while, but she's only recently upgraded to the premium and got the new features. Um, Vicky is a, an old hand at it and has been using it for a long time. I have had an account since 2004, but I, ha I only really started using it in 2008 when I started my business. And uh, it's gone through a lot of different evolutions since then. Um, I started off that I put everything for my business in there. That became too cumbersome. <laughs> uh, it just, you know, I, it ended up, basically, it ended up as yet another dumping ground. And I really don't need <laughs> another dumping ground. Uh, I've got Pinterest for, you know, visual stuff that I want to keep an eye on. So if I see a picture that really sparks my interest or a creative prompt or something like that, I can clip it into Pinterest. It's there. My friends can see it, my students can see it, I can share it with other people. It doesn't have to be a private thing. It can just go on Pinterest. And that really is the criteria that I use for my Evernote account. Is it private enough to warrant being in Evernote? Because unless I specifically share something, Evernote is only me. I can own, I'm the only person who can access it. Uh, unless I share a folder with someone specifically or unless I make a folder public. So I I think about, about 18 months ago, I realised that what I was doing was clipping things from the internet to read that I didn't and clipping pictures or craft ideas or whatever from the internet to use as inspiration later that I didn't I would <laughs> using a trend here I would take pictures of things from magazines that I was going to read later that I didn't you know it just became a dumping ground and like I say I've already got Pinterest so anything that's anything that can be public goes on Pinterest Anything that is private but is not, but it is media, like um, photos or uh, videos or audio tracks or anything like that goes in Dropbox because Dropbox, I have a, <clears throat> I have a Samsung Galaxy Note 2, yes, Galaxy Note 2, well I have a Galaxy Note 1 and 2, but this is my Note 2 that I use as a phone and on there I get, because it's Samsung I automatically got two years of like half a terabyte or something of free storage so and then I got a second Samsung so I got another two years and then I got a Samsung tablet so I got another two years so I've effectively got six years of um, free storage on my Dropbox for photos and videos and 59 gigs or whatever it is is more than enough believe me uh, even with the amount of videos and things that I shoot Sorry, Maddie's trying to get up on my lap. Hi, Maddie. How are you doing, baby? We've got really bad weather today in the UK. Well, we have had for the last couple of days. It's crazy windy. Uh, if you can hear a weird kazoo noise out the back, it's not a kazoo. It's the wind whistling through a hole in the fence. <laughs> I know. It took me two hours yesterday to figure that out. 
Uh, but the wind is freaking Maddie out a bit. She doesn't like the noise. So she's sitting next to mummy trying to get snuggles. So <laughs> if I do weird things, it's because Maddie's pulling me. Hello, baby. Right. Uh, so where was I? Yeah, if it's media of some sort, it goes in Dropbox. If it's um, just a general interest stuff, it goes in Pinterest. If it's stuff that is specifically for my students, it either goes in Vimeo, if it's a video, or if it's uh, anything else, basically, it goes in my private Facebook group, which is only for students, paid students of my classes. Uh, and if there's anything else that needs to go up, uh, or I need storage for, I've got my own server as well. So I try not to use Evernote for just any old stuff, basically. It has so many functions that it's tempting to use it for absolutely everything. But what I found was that I stopped bothering to look at things after I'd archived them in there. It just became an archive. And for me, it's a lot better to have it as a working daily thing that I can access. Now, <clears throat> uh, I'm going to open Evernote on the screen on my screen here you can see I've got it on my phone I can't show you it on my phone because as you can see the flicker rate is I can't get the flicker rate right so you'd have to deal with that horrible flicking but like I said I can't show you a lot of what I've got in Evernote anyway because if I do you will see a lot of personal information that I don't want to share so I'm going to kind of talk you through what I've got and I don't know maybe I'll do a blog post <clears throat> excuse me I'll do might do a blog post on my tumblr with a like a, a written version of it for those who need to see something to understand it because I know it, it doesn't always work if somebody talks you through something sometimes you have to see it I'm like that uh, so I'll I'll talk you through what I do but I'll put some kind of visual element on my tumblr in, um, with the video I'll have to put my glasses on to see but I'll have to wear them like this because if I put them up there you'll get horrible purple glare. I don't know why I've got anti-reflective coating on them but they glow purple. Don't ask me why uh, but I need them to see what's on my phone so. Uh, so in Evernote basically you can you put notes surprisingly and those notes can be anything they can be pictures they can be clips from the web they can be pdf files uh, you can even put short videos in there uh, just about anything and you can organize those notes in several ways you can either put them in notebooks and then group those notebooks into a stack so for instance i could put lots of different notes for different things that i want to teach in my when frog sing class um, and we have different things that we're doing each month so I could say, okay, this is January, this is February, this is March, or this is the planning, this is the drawing, this is the writing, or whatever. I can do it in any way. I can make all these notes with different ideas and put them all into one notebook labelled January, or February, or March, or planning, or writing, or creating, however way I want to structure it. And then I can put that whole stack together in one notebook called When Frogs Sing 2015. Or I can do exactly the same thing. And with each note, I can put a tag on it, you know, like hashtags on Twitter or Instagram. They're basically grouping mechanisms. So each for each note, I can say, right, what is important about this note? It's When Frogs Sing 2015. It's to do with drawing. And it's specifically to do with... Um, hands for instance uh, so I could put those three hashtags on there uh, and then being able to search by hashtags means that I can put out absolutely anything that has the hashtag drawing or anything that has the hashtag hands or anything that has the hashtag when frogs sing 2015 and I don't need to put it into notebooks and group it together uh, or I could put it all in a notebook labelled When Frogs Sing 2015 and put a stack together of all my classes. So there's hundreds of different ways you can organise your stuff. Now, what I do is I only have um, 
and let me check one two three four five six seven eight nine ten notebooks in Evernote now a lot of people if you look on YouTube for people who've shown Evernote um, structures they've got hundreds of notebooks and hundreds of stacks <coughs> Carrie Harling <coughs> she, you know she, she, Carrie has everything in Evernote <laughs> and we kind of work in opposite ways because if I put everything in Evernote I don't use it for anything basically so I keep mine very very simple and very current that is the key is it important and is it current so for instance I have uh, and a, a little trick that I found if you put dot notebook name for the notebook name the, the dots will come up at the top of the list so I have dot brain dump so that that notebook is always at the top of the list it's the first one I see then I've got uh, dot notebook which is I'll tell you what it is but it, you know those two are always at the top of the list plus the current class that I'm teaching which is uh, 2015 class notes so I can show you that bit whoops sorry about the glare I may have to take there we go you can see it there brain dump 2015 class list and notebook I may have to take photos or draw it or something for you because this flickering is awful I don't want to give anybody a headache uh, so those are the three three <coughs> notebooks that I use most. Gypsy, quiet babe. I also have a specific notebook for reminders, which I'll talk about later. And then I have two stacks of notebooks, a study snack and a teaching stack. Snack? A study stack and a teaching stack. Those are groups of notebooks and what I've done is in my teaching stack I've got the two notebooks that are currently relevant there 2014 class and 2015 class notes and in my study stack I've got all the different things that I'm studying <laughs> like I was doing a class on animal psychology so that was in here as a notebook uh, I've been following Susie Blue's paint and chronicle class so I've got um, I've got all the weeks on here. I've I've pinned all them all into Evernote because I can't always access the internet, but I can always access Evernote. So if I'm out and about and I can't access the internet, I can, I've still got my class notes on there. And when I've done that particular week or that particular class, I delete it. So yeah, that's that's how those two stacks work. I've also got a witchcraft book of shadows one which is just for um, ideas and notes and whatever I happen to be researching at the moment so at the moment I'm researching um, spirit totems for the elephant so I've got quite a few things in here that are specifically to do with the elephant that I want to refer back to now the difference between my brain dump and my notebook is my brain dump is literally the dumping ground I've set it as my default notebook everything goes in there unless it's something that is for reference specifically uh, it goes into my brain dump uh, and even if it is for reference sometimes I will put it in brain dump just to make sure that I do something with it so my brain dump is basically my inbox my notebook is stuff that I've read I've dealt with but for whatever reason I want to keep um, and I've got stuff in here like sorry the wind's driving them crazy uh, I have stuff in here like uh, how to move a WordPress website how to uh, the Final Cut Pro keyboard shortcuts because I can't remember them um, the compression settings for Vimeo for using um, Final Cut Pro comp compressor uh, a new tarot card spread that I want to teach myself uh, pictures of hair inspiration and stuff like that for my next haircut so 
that is stuff that I've I've looked at, I've dealt with. I know I need it, but I'm not going to keep it long term. So it goes in my notebook, and when I've had my haircut, I will delete that note. I don't need it anymore because the next time I get my haircut, I'll be on to something else. Um, once I've moved my WordPress website, that's done. That's dusted. I won't need that again. I can delete it. I don't need to keep it because. The internet is out there, people, <laughs> okay? If the internet disappears tomorrow, you won't need your WordPress website. You won't need to know how to move your WordPress website. So that's a moot point. I can always go online and find out how to move a WordPress website. And the thing is, there's no point keeping this particular note because it's from, well, it's actually from March 2015. It was written in March 2015 for the new update. But by the time I want to use, move my WordPress site again, there'll be no point that this will be out of date it probably won't work the same way i'll have to do something different so i don't keep stuff that i don't need so basically my brain dump is stuff that is not sorted i've just chucked it in there i'll deal with it later uh, but i do put hashtags on things like to read if it's an article that i want to read i will put to read when my to read list gets to 10 I will force myself to sit down and get through at least one or two of them. They are usually articles that I thought I would read and make notes on. So I will set aside an hour and I'll say, right, OK, I'll do this one, this one and this one. Uh, occasionally, I find that actually they're not what I thought they were. I don't really need to read them. Whatever. I delete them. They're gone. Uh, if it's something that I do need to refer back to, and it, that's not very often, um, but if it is something I do need to refer back to, I will put it in my reference book. Uh, or unless it's something to do with my book of shadows and then it goes in my book of shadows book. So if I find, for instance, a really good article, what I think is a really good article on elephant totems, but I don't have time to read it now. I'll clip it into Evernote and shove it in my brain dump book with a tag elephant totems book of shadows to read. That way I can search for Book of Shadows to read and find all the articles that are in there for my Book of Shadows that I haven't read yet. OK, that's the logic behind it. I could also find everything to do with elephant totems that I've put in my to read section uh, and work on just that at a time. Once a week or sometimes more often, just whenever I feel like it, I've got time. I will pop in, look at my brain dump section and decide what I've got time to action. If I can action it and do it and get rid of it, then I do. So say it's it's a quiet afternoon. I don't have anything particularly pressing to do. And I think, oh, I should get rid of some of those articles in my to read section. I'll go into brain dump, look at the articles, see which ones I've got about what. And I might say, OK, I'll do my elephant totem ones today and take some notes on them. I do all those, I take the notes, I get rid of the article, okay? Now, I put the articles in my book of shadows, but I also write the reference down. So I will write down the website and information in my book of shadows. I don't need to keep it in Evernote. It needs to be in my book of shadows with the article so that when I'm looking at it and saying, oh, this is really inf interesting information. Where the hell did I get this from? I want to go back and read the full article again because I don't understand what that meant. I can go back into the Internet with the URL that I've written in my book and get the information and say, right, OK, I know where that's come from now. If it's something that I want to print out for my Book of Shadows, it goes into my Book of Shadows reference book. And then I'll, once I've got enough to fill up an A4 piece of paper, I will print them all out. Uh, what else do I have? My reference book. Right. Now, my reference book has all sorts of things. It has, um, I'll just tell you the kind of things I've got in my reference book. Because this is stuff purely that I need to reference at some time on a regular basis or I will need to reference it but I may not know when but I know it's going to come up at some point I should have it with me so I've got for instance my self-employment info for the government website I've got my wi-fi admin passwords and login passwords because I don't know where the bit of paper is so I took a photo of the bit of paper and I put it into Evernote as my wi-fi password information 
I have uh, my DIY fish contents pages from last year. So if I need to go back and reference anything, I can find it. Now, one of the things that Evernote does, if you pay for the premium service, which is surprisingly not that expensive for what they give you, um, even if it's a handwritten note or it's words in a photo, you can search for it. <laughs> it's like, oh, hallelujah, you know. <laughs> so there's, there's no trying to leaf through hundreds of contents pages. When I've done a contents page in any of my books, um, I just take a photo of the comp contents page and put it into Evernote. And I can go into Evernote now and find all of my contents pages. You can see they come up. Ooh. There's on, oops, can't get rid of the light. There we go. There's my contents pages, just photos of my contents pages. And I can go in and look for specifically something that I know is in there. So I tend to use obvious stuff. So if I'm looking for when my Samsung warranty runs out on my tablet, I will search for Samsung tablet warranty. Uh, because I will have written it down as Samsung tablet warranty ends and then a date. <laughs> so it's, it's, a, it's a thing I have about just writing obvious stuff because I don't believe in using complicated filing systems. If you can't immediately think where something is, then it's in the wrong place. And I, I file things under all sorts of weird places that other people wouldn't think of. Um, that I, I can't actually think of one, but I, I've been known to put, you know, N power bills for the electricity under shoes <laughs> because I've put them in a shoe box, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. But as long as I know where it is, that's fine. And as disorganised as I am with my actual studio with, you know, paper and on computer and everything else, I am very, very organised. I can find receipts from like, 10 years ago. <laughs> Probably should have thrown those out by now, but I can find them. I know where they are. Uh, what else do I have? I have a camera warranty. I have a, oh, I have licenses for software. So if anybody says, do you have a license for this software, for this font, for this, you know, do you have copyright authorization for this picture? It's all in here. I've got it. Yes, I have. Uh, I've got my Filofax registration numbers. If you lose your Filofax, I've got printouts of my blood pressure, weight, bloods, everything else from the doctors. I've got stuff from the vets for the dogs. Uh, I've also got all their dog lost alerts. So if I'm out and about with the dogs, I w probably won't have Wi-Fi because I'm usually in the middle of a field somewhere, but I have my phone with me. Now I can read my stuff offline. So rather than having to take my wallet with me, which has got the dog's cards in it, I can just take my phone. And on my phone, I've got, for instance, a picture of, uh, say, Maddie gets off her lead and she runs off because she's the only one with no recall. The other two come back when they're called. Um, sorry, I've just updated my phone the other day, uh, reset my phone, and it's, it's taking a little while to upload, to uh, download images. Um, no, it's not going to do it. Uh, but you can see it there. Let's just cover those over. Whoops. You can see it there. There it is. So that's the dogs file. Any notes to do with the dogs, I attach to those files there. They're not um, separate notes. They're, uh, I add to the note so all the pet stuff is in one note. It's just easier for me that way, rather than putting it all in a notebook. Uh, same with my address book. If I get any uh, business cards or addresses or anything like that that I need to keep on me, I will, I've will. i got one note here called address book and I will literally, I will take a photo of a, a card, shove it in my brain dump book, and then when I come to organise my Evernote at the end of the week or, you know, whenever, I will, you can click on the two notes and you can merge them, <laughs> basically. So that one little picture of a, a business card, massive note of address books, and you can merge the two together. So 
it just makes more sense to me that to do that than have 500 notes in a notebook and I'll explain why in a minute. Uh, I've got backups of all my bank information, I've got a password checklist. Now Evernote doesn't have the option to password protect specific files. So everything I have in here is coded. So all my bank information and stuff like that, I have one number missing. Um, I take the same number from all my accounts and I delete it. And I know what that number is, but nobody else would know what that number is. So, you know, you'd have to sit there for a couple of hours and figure it out, basically. By which time I would have put an alert on all my stuff anyway. So, yeah, I just um, I just Photoshop it out or use S Note on my Samsung to fig to mark it out. All my passwords, I write the first letter of the password and the last four digits, so I know because of the way I construct my passwords. Gypsy, be quiet, babe. Because of the way I construct my passwords, I know what the infill is, but nobody else would. You would have to know my system, and to know my system, you would have to understand my system, and good luck with that. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> That's that. Uh, my to-read list has actually got 13 notes in it now, but four of them are Book of Shadows notes, so that's okay. Uh, and one I've already read, I just haven't taken notes on it yet. So, that's, you know, it's getting near the 10 mark. Well, it's got 13, but it's it's coming up to the 10 mark for 10 that I need to read. So, it's I'll probably put some time by to do that tomorrow. And then my last one is YouTube. Now, my YouTube one is a bit different to all the others. I've got, um, basically I've got three notes in there. I have a list of essay FAQs that people have asked me over, t over time because I do intend to do an FAQ video. I don't get enough FAQs. They're more infrequently asked questions, to be honest, but I do get questions. So at some point I'll do a short FAQ video and you know, put them all together. But I only have about five questions at the moment and they tend to be all very repetitive anyway. So uh, Then I have a, a note with my YouTube stats, which I copy and paste from another program that I get in an email. Now, I do get the email, but and I can forward the email to Evernote, but what I've found is if you forward the email to Evernote, you get all this disclaimer bump and all sorts of headers and IP addresses and all sorts of crap. And all I want is the bit that says how many subscribers I've got, how many, what the date is, how many readings I've got, you know, all, all that basic stuff. It's like one line of text. Um, and instead you get like, an entire email and I don't see the point in that so I just copy and paste it from the email and chuck it in the note and then I've got another one which is YouTube ideas now this one looks a little bit different it looks like that it's a picture okay I know it's hard to see I'm sorry I can't really show you properly but it's a picture the reason it's a picture is because I use the Evernote post-it option the what right Evernote has two very clever functions. You have, uh, let me see if I can find it. I can never remember which one's it, one it's in. Is it in notes? No. Must be in camera. There it is. So you have these two options. You have Moleskin Notebook and you have Post-it Note. Okay. You can also record video and audio, which is very handy, uh, especially if you're like me. I don't, I don't always have time to write something down, but I have plenty of time to press audio and oh, don't forget to do such and such when I get home. Anyway, besides the point. So Moleskin Notebook, uh, you'll have seen these on Vickies. You get the stickers and you can customise it. There we go. Can you see that? OK. You can customise it to say, oh yeah, I want this to go into this notebook, I want to tag it with this. Um, all of mine except two go into Brain Dump. Uh, one goes into Reminders and one goes into Classwork. Because Classwork is Classwork, basically. It's usually stuff I've written down for the next class. It's not normally 
anything I need to action. It's ideas and, and things. And each one has a tag. So, uh, for instance, the purple one goes into classwork and it's labelled When Frogs Sing 2015. The uh, orange one is labelled student stuff and that goes into brain dump because if it's student stuff I need to action it and then file it away or delete it. Uh, home stuff, that all goes into my brain dump labelled home. So I can go in and say, right, I've got a day off, I've got some home stuff to do, or errands have I got to do, go into Evernote, click on the home stuff and on the home tag and there it is, everything I've ever written in my notebook that says home next to it, I've got the information there. Now, what I've found with the smart stickers is that they don't always work on non-Evernote paper which I think is ridiculous. They should just work as stickers, I think. Um, I know it's all to do with the moleskin tie-in and blah, 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 but if you're using a moleskin notebook, you should be able to use the moleskin stickers, I think, without having the special paper. But there's something about the Evernote paper, I think it's the green lines and dots on it, that because they don't do a plain version. Uh, I think it's the green that makes it realise that it's a, an Evernote sticker and file it away. So, one second. In my bag, I carry around this, which is my uh, pocket moleskin Evernote book. I'm not going to show you what's in here. It's mostly just lists and stuff like, oh, there's my password list. <laughs> um, and um, there's a couple of class lists from last year. Uh, and you can see I, I put stickers on the bottom. So when I've done that class list and I finalised what's going to be in that class, I take a pic I put the sticker on the bottom and I take a picture of it. That means that I don't have to have this notebook with me as long as I've got my phone or my computer or my tablet or my watch. I'll tell you about that in a minute. Uh, I can access that information and I can say, what was I going to do next week for that class on Thursday? I can't remember. Um, you know, I don't have to carry lists and stuff with me. I, I've got the information there. Now, the other thing I use is the post-it option. And for the post-its, now I prefer the way the post-its are done. You can buy Evernote-specific post-its. And when I say post-its, I don't just mean sticky notes. I mean proper post-it brand post-its. Uh, post-it little R thing is what I mean. So they've got to be proper post-it brand. And you can use four different colours. You've got the yellow, the neon pink, the electric blue and the lime. Uh, unfortunately, they don't have the orange. Uh, apparently, they don't have the orange ones in America. We've got orange over here. Can we have some orange, please? Uh, of course, orange I use for class stuff, so that messes up my colour so system. Um, but yeah, that's that's the four colours I've got. We also have purple ones, actually, which would bring it in line with the stickers, which are the same colour. Come on, people, come on. Now... You can use the stickers from the Moleskine notebook on the post-it notes. And you don't have to have the original Evernote post-it notes. You can use ordinary post-it notes as long as they are genuine post-it brand post-it notes. So you can't just take any sticky note and stick a sticker on it. Here's the stickers. This is what the stickers look like. See, I use the orange ones a lot because there's no orange sticky note. <laughs> um... I can stick a sticker on my post-it note and use it that way and file it or I can put my sticker on my Evernote page and file it or I can now watch me not be able to find any of my Evernote my any of my post-it stickers now do I have any with me I don't think I've even got any with me I think they're all downstairs oh here we go now, this is not a plain post-it sticker, but it is a post-it brand sticker. And oh, that one's not a very good example because it's orange and the orange ones don't work. But this is pink. It is pink, not purple. So I can use the neon pink post-it notes from post-it and write stuff on it, take a photo, and it will automatically tag that photo with YouTube, 
it will put it in my brain dump and it will set a reminder for one week's time. So I have a U idea for a YouTube video. Oh, what am I going to do? Oh, uh, grab a pink post-it, write it down. Ah, take a photo of it, stick it in a note. There we go. Now I've got it. I can stick that bit of paper in my book, which will remind me that I've got it there. But I've also got it in here. So when I'm like, oh, I need to do some YouTube videos. And I know I had lo loads of ideas last week, but what were they all? Go into here, look for the pink sticky, which is uh, this one. It's an arrow. I don't know if you can see that. Or I can go in and look for YouTube ideas, which is on pink post-it notes and I can pull up all that information in one place and again what I do with all those ones labelled because because when I take a photo of a pink post-it note it automatically tags it as a YouTube idea I can pull up all the tags that say YouTube ideas and merge them together into one note so I've got one single note with all my YouTube ideas, but it's got lots of pictures of different post-it notes in it. And if I think, oh, I was going to do something on <sighs> washi tape. What was it on washi tape I was going to do? I can't remember. I can go into Evernote and I can search in YouTube ideas tag washi tape and it will come up with every note that says washi tape on it. And I can go, ah, where is it? Where? There it is. That's the one I want. And then when I'm done, I can get rid of that particular post-it note, just delete the picture. So I know that's very difficult to follow without having it on screen, but I can't show you it on screen. I've got too much personal information in there and I've got, um, like I said, I've got this flickering thing going on. But that is basically how I use it. I only... <laughs> I dropped my phone, sorry. I only use Evernote for important stuff that is private and current uh, and the only other thing I use it for storage for and that is one very specific thing is for my receipts for like um, bus tickets or postage or anything like that to do with the business so my expenses receipts that are not in some way electronic so you know if you've bought something on Amazon it's electronic I don't need to print it out I can save the PDF from Amazon when I do my accounts but bus tickets and and things like that stuff you've bought in the local shop because you needed envelopes or you know postage stuff and they just give you a little receipt I need to keep all that but I am terrible for losing it because you know bus tickets aren't very big plus they're all printed on this facsimile paper and the the printing wears off after a while even if they're kept in good conditions the print the ink will disappear so I take a photo of it and that way I know that I've got a copy of it so even if my receipts have got big chunks missing out of it it doesn't matter I've got a picture on here of my uh, original backup you know and I can always reprint it from my phone or whatever so there you go that is how I use Evernote it is a current working document and it is basically I suppose you could call it a copy of my file of facts really I mean it's not literally a copy of my file of facts but you know if it's important enough to write in my file of facts it's important enough to put in Evernote if it is current it needs to be backed up into Evernote when it's no longer current it gets taken out of my file of facts and it gets taken out of Evernote uh, when I've done it I cross it off basically um, and my crossing off in Evernote is deleting it um, very occasionally I will archive it but not very often uh, unless it's really really important I don't tend to archive things so yeah that is how I use Evernote I hope that was useful for some of you and I hope it's given you another view on how to use it because I know um, Vicky tends to use hers very much for collecting ideas uh, and magazines and, and things like that and, and project stuff that she's researching. Carrie tends to use hers as an archive where it's all stuff that she needs to keep, that she needs to refer back to because of the nature of her work. She has to refer back to stuff a lot. And mine is all, what do I need to do now? What do I need to be able to access? So if I have to go out and all I can do is take with me my phone and I can't carry my bag or whatever, 
or you know say I'm out and I'm waiting for somebody and I think oh I could do something to read go into Evernote read one of my articles <laughs> make notes in my passport Midori that I always have with me uh, and the great thing about these passport books is that nearly all of them in the, the the little red ones that you get all the pages are perforated in these so I can make notes in this book and if I want to I can take it out really easily without destroying the book I can take out that bit of paper and put it in my big notebook later so I love that versatility of being able to you know just you know, I wasn't planning on sitting reading or anything but you know trains late whatever I'm going to be hanging around for 40 minutes so I'll pick a nice big chunky article and I'll go through it and I'll read that while I wait uh, now I think I think the offline option is only available if you're a premium subscriber but like I say the premium subscription is very cheap and also if you buy one of these notebooks you get a premium subscription for X amount of time so if you are not sure if you want to use Evernote or not uh, this might be a good way to go. If you get the little pack, you can get the little pack of Kaye's, uh, which all come with a pack of stickers, and I think they're one month each, so you get three months. This is a three month one, and I think with the a, the large version, you get six months. Don't quote me on that, I'm not sure. But you certainly get at least three months with these little notebooks. Um, and also, you can sign up for Evernote for just one month. Uh, what I used to do when, when I was struggling with money but I want, needed to use Evernote was uh, I used to spend the money for the code for one month, upload everything I needed because you get extra upload space, upload everything from the last month that I needed to be able to reference and then uh, you know sort out what I didn't need, get, get it all organised and then not pay for it again until I needed to archive a lot of stuff again which might be the next month or it might be three months down the road so you can do that and it does work uh, yeah like I say I hope that makes sense it, to me it's a very simple system does it is it important enough to put into Evernote do I need to have it with me all the time um, you know, I've got things like copies of my passport and my insurance and my uh, driver's license and stuff like that. You know, I don't carry my passport everywhere. I don't even try to carry my driver's license everywhere. But sometimes you need to have your driver's license number or you need to have your passport number or you need to have your NHS card or you need to have your uh, national insurance card because you can't get those replaced anymore. So I've got backups of all of that in here. And although you can't password protect Evernote notebooks Evernote itself is on a password and you can lock the app so on here when you open the app in the settings there is the option to put a pin code on so you can't actually open the Evernote app without the pin code now that can be a bit annoying but you know if you're traveling or something I generally put it on in case I lose my phone now the other thing I've got is my uh, a lot of people have asked me about my watch it's a Sony smartwatch um, I don't have a Sony phone so I can't use it to its full potential but uh, as and when I have to upgrade my phone I'll probably move to a Sony I think. Uh, I have lots of different things on here uh, and one of the things I have on here, oh because I reset my phone the other day I haven't got it on here. <laughs> There's an app called Everwatch and what that does is allow you to access 30 notes from your watch on your phone. So if I take the dogs out, um, I can set 30 notes that I want to have available on my phone. And if I take the dogs out, I can just have my watch on me and I don't need to have my phone to get, you know, I can go in and I can open Ever Everwatch and I can get you know, Maddie's dog lost information and I can I can put in an alert and say you know she's run off <clears throat> sorry my throat's gone really dry that's what happens when you talk a lot so yeah that's another way I use Evernote I can't go into detail on that one because I don't actually have it installed at the moment because like I say I reset my phone the other day but it does come up on here 
uh, and it looks very similar to that. Okay, that's um, that's actually the text option, but that's basically what your um, Evernote stuff looks like when it comes up. Now, the only downside I've heard, found with the Evernote stuff is that if it's a picture app, it doesn't always show up. So if it's really important information, rather than just having the picture, I always write the information underneath as well. Uh, that way I can access it on my watch. Right, so there you go. If you've got any questions, leave them down below. Would love to hear what you think. Uh, how do you use Evernote? Have you been inspired to try it by our little collaboration here at Coffee Addicts? Uh, what are you using it for? I want to know. Tell me. Bye. <laughs>